a tool God gave us to freeze our enemies. Praise to God. The scripture, God's perfect word, says, Matthew 21, 15, And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he, Jesus, did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased, and said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus saith unto them, Yea, have you never read? Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. This saying of Jesus is associated with Psalm 8-2, which gives some insight into what Jesus was saying. That scripture says, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. As I have found out about the scripture, there is a first and second element to many key verses of the scripture, which elements are largely a mystery. Here of interest in Matthew 21.16 is 1. Babes 2. Sucklings Notice more than likely these are not random words to generally describe babies or very young children, but rather this is indicating something we might have been familiar with from Isaiah 28 and 66, where I learned that code words breasts and milk were clearly a code being used to convey a key truth. Isaiah 28 clearly tells us the living will receive key truths and live, and the wicked will not receive key truths, but false notions and perish. I cannot find in Psalm 8-2 how Jesus got that praise is perfected in the mouths of babes and sucklings as praise is not mentioned in this verse or anywhere else in context that I could find. But we can see clearly this is what Jesus was referring to as it has those two key words in order, babes and sucklings. Thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. I do not as yet see how this relates to perfecting praise, or perhaps he is teaching it for us right in this moment, with Matthew 21.16 being the revelation of this meaning. So we see then that the ordaining of strength against the enemy is associated with praise. Psalm 8.2 out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. Herein lies a powerful tool, which, if you are a fighting Christian, you should definitely be using. I can remember hearing at some point how that when Christians are praising God, this causes unbearable pain to demons. The suckling children appears to be a metaphor referring to us Christians who are learning from God through the Spirit the things needed to enter the kingdom of God. So if we see here that praise is connected to strength to still the enemy and the avenger, then we might understand that by the act of praising God, we are using a powerful weapon to hinder the work of the devil. As an interesting side note, notice the two elements again, enemy and avenger, and what is the difference? Further. I got an external clue from a Christian video in which it was described there was a certain person who was a witch working for Satan, and when they went to attack a certain Christian, both she and some demons that were with her suddenly froze in midair and could not move for three days. It turned out that it was a result of that Christian praying. In another witness, I heard someone in the spirit say that they saw that when some demons were on their way to do some mayhem, praying Christians created a wall of fire which blocked the demons, and they could not pass because of that wall of fire. Therefore, adding up the elements in Psalm 8-2 and Matthew 21-16, we might realize that through the use of praise, we can, in similar fashion, block and prevent the works of the enemy. The more Christians there are in an area, using praise in prayer, likely the less demonic activity can be done in that place. And this might likely have a positive outcome you can notice. One might try as an experiment 
praising God regularly, and see what happens. The scripture says, James 4.8, Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh to you. And this praise of God sounds to me like a way to draw near to God. But what are the best ways to praise God? Perhaps it is taking things God has done out of the scripture and saying, Praise to God for this thing? We also hear the phrase, the sacrifice of praise, Hebrews 13.15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. I remember thinking to myself that it sounds like pandering or being fake to be saying, Praise to God! It seemed to me like a form of virtue signaling. But more likely it was my own immaturity as a Christian. Therefore, do not feel dismayed if you don't find the logic in praise right away, or this seems like something that just isn't you. I think in time, all true hearts in the faith of Jesus will find all what they need to find. I think people do not think carefully enough before all forms of communication. So I would say that especially with God, one wants to speak in the most thoughtful manner. If the scripture calls it the sacrifice of praise, we might understand that because now is the hour of our discontent, as this time is called, we can, despite our discontent, offer words of thanks and praise to God, even if we do not fully understand it. Can we not realize in faith that the things God has promised will come to pass? As you might know from watching my channel, I try to find interest and passion in the things of God. I give thanks to God that He has made me to know His words and to see past the illusion of the world. Praise to Father God in heaven, creator of all things, for His great words, which are pure, and He has given them freely to us. Psalm 12:6. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. I give praise to God for His unsearchable truths, a great mystery for us to marvel in continually. I praise God for being a God of justice, who creates the good and the evil. He, the Lord, does all these things. I praise God for making beauty and love, and works, and the fruit of our works. God has made a life and a kingdom, wherein there is no more pain, sorrow, death, nor crying any more, but only joy on our heads. What great thing is this? If you're watching this, it's not too late. Say this prayer now. Father in heaven, please save my soul by the work of your son Jesus on the cross, and show me your pure words in the authorized King James Bible.